What's up, everybody? Brett Mix, Mixer Madness here for the Raw Review for tonight, March the 11th, 2024, from the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. Whether you watched the show or you didn't, welcome. Spend the next 20 to 25 minutes here on this review where we'll go over everything that happened on tonight's show with some analysis on the side. So whether you watched it or you didn't, you can uh, get the best of both worlds either way. Tonight's show was somewhat interesting. The opening segment with Drew and Seth really did nothing for me, to be honest. Though I think Drew did a good job, before being fair, on the stick. It just didn't interest me that much. It felt a little contrived, a little forced, not genuine rivalry or an interesting feud. Not for WrestleMania's sake, anyway, but let's talk about that. Colin McAfee, as always, from the desk on Monday Night Raw, as of late, anyway. The last five weeks, it's been that way. I think the commentary team's... I think it was about four or five weeks ago when we got these new commentary teams. We open this Raw from the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. We first see the first shot outside of Lincoln Financial Field in Philly as that's where WrestleMania 40 is going to take place and that's going to emanate from. But then we get a cross shot of Houston, Texas where it's still daylight as Raw begins. And we see Jey Uso uh, arrive and we also see Gunther who arrives as well. And as well as rapper Travis Scott, Houston born, he was he arrives and he was he was in the crowd tonight. So uh, main event Jey Uso, of course, yeet, yeah, uh, invited him with a hug and all that and handshake. We open things up for the night with Drew McIntyre of all people, someone who I've noticed in, has come up somewhat poor in ratings. I've noticed his segments. Uh, haven't drawn the highest speaking of drawing i would just like to invite anybody that hasn't already to hit like and subscribe to my uh, channel i'm trying to grow the channel so i would really appreciate it if you did that um i've been noticing drew mcintyre hasn't been drawing the best when i've been looking at his quarterly hour when i've been breaking down the raw ratings i look at the quarter hours and drew mcintyre segments usually drop uh thousands of viewers it's it's not a uh, coincidence because even during the pandemic when Drew was champion, uh, the numbers would drop off whenever he was in the main event. And that's something that's followed him to, to, to today's WWE. Uh, I'm not saying everybody hates Drew and he's a ratings killer, but I am noticing a trend. So we'll see how this Raw does in the opening hour with Drew, a big focal point of it. We'll see if that does well because that usually does the best for all the raw segments. It usually, unless there's a big return in the second hour, the first hour does the best for Monday Night Raw. So with Drew opening up, we'll see this week how it does. I'm interested to see that. Maybe he'll have the highest rated segment with the opening segment. That's uh, That'll be interesting to see. Drew McIntyre points out that he's the only one keeping Punk relevant uh, when the crowd chants CM Punk. And uh, Drew then calls Seth a junkie, how he's a hypocrite and he needs the attention. He's a junkie and he needs to be in the spotlight. And I kind of like this uh, because it's true. Seth is already the world champion. He already has a match at WrestleMania for the world title. Uh, I And I would want the challenger to feel like he's slated, to feel like this is not the most important thing on the night. That I would want the challenger to think that way. So Drew McIntyre, it's completely logical for him to be mad at this. But uh, yeah, he says that Seth is a junkie. And Seth comes out and tells him to shut up and wait, wait, wait. This crowd sing his song as he gets into the ring. Seth taunts Drew some more and he says, give me a Claymore. He gets down on his knees and says, do it right here. And, uh, he, and Drew says, don't tempt me pretty much. Um, give me another Claymore McIntyre Rollins face to face he's right that he needed to get over the bloodline he took his advice to get wins Drew said momentum because as a champ that's all you should care about is getting the wins and all Seth Rollins cares about is Seth Rollins Seth says you're starting to remind me of a guy of CM Punk who's who he was talking about he talks about a guy with tattoos from Chicago because I always thought he was the biggest hypocrite in the world until I met you, Seth says to Drew. Seth then rocks Drew uh, crying about the bloodline and mocks him, I should say. And now Seth mentions McIntyre's wins, but with help from the bloodline. 
Seth says it ain't going to happen because on night one, me and Rhodes will take down the bloodline. Then it's night two, and it's time for them for the title. Rollins says the last thing you're going to hear is the people singing my song at WrestleMania. And they start to sing the song throughout the promo. Drew says, I know what you're doing. You want me to drop you, and there's nothing you can say to provoke me. So you're not going to get the better of me, pretty much, Drew's saying to Seth. Seth says, you want to show, want to know why I haven't paid attention to you on the road to Mania? You got everyone, from the bloodline to my injured back to my knee. The thing I'm worried about least is Drew McIntyre. And Drew walks away furious. And De Rollins continues to act like the Joker in the middle of the ring that he is. So opening segment didn't do anything but build towards their match at WrestleMania. Ideally, I mean, you want the opening segment ideally to build to something tonight. But if it's towards uh, the world title match, which definitely needs some build, uh, you, it's good that they did that. But um, it's almost as if they were saying, we got 26 nights to Mania. Let's build our Raw World title match since we haven't barely done that. So that's what that felt like tonight. They put these two guys together and said, oh shit, we're just we're just we're just under four weeks away to WrestleMania. We need this world title match to have some more build. And uh, they're starting that. I'm just not terribly interested in it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just not... Uh, Drew and Seth aren't my favorite guys. And we've seen Drew and Seth wrestle a couple times, I think, in the last few months. And they've been good matches. But at the same time, it's like we've already seen it. And the storyline revolving around it isn't the most captivating. We got one guy that barely cares about it and Seth. And the other guy, Drew, just talking about he's how he's mad that the other guy doesn't care about it. So, and Seth even says himself, the thing that he's least talking, thinking about, or about WrestleMania is Drew McIntyre, his challenger for the world title. That's, that's not good. That pretty much mocks the build of it all. And I don't really get Drew's motives for not wanting to attack Mac, uh, Rollins tonight. He just walked back frustrated. Why didn't he attack Rollins? I mean... If I if if I was Drew, I'd I'd knock his head off with a claymore. We'll have to see. Maybe it gets a bit more personal as the weeks progress. Maybe they didn't want to give all of it right away. I can understand that. Opening the match, opening the show, I should say, for in ring, is Beck, Le, Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. Lynch confirmed, uh, cornered Morgan early. They talked about how successful the money in the bank and the cash in was for Liv, and then a suicide dive to the outside by Liv. Uh, big break mid-match says and Liv hits a code breaker to Becky Lynch off the ropes. Another code breaker, but Becky kicks out as that as, as she springboarded her offense to the code breaker. Becky goes for a German off the apron, which I haven't seen since Eddie and Kurt Angle did that at WrestleMania 20 when Kurt Angle tried to suplex Eddie, German suplex him off the side apron, and Eddie had to hang on to the ropes. Maybe I've seen it after that, but that's just where I remember that move the most. A sunset flip powerbomb by Liv. A close near fall crowd chant had the matches awesome. It was going good at the time. It was nowhere near awesome. I don't get WWE crowds these days from singing Seth's song to singing This Is Awesome uh, to chanting diarrhea. I, I really don't get the crowd these days. Big match Bex gets in control but and, and the what chants. Becky in control, but Liv uh, using her resourcefulness in the ring to roll out of the ring using her experience. And then later in the match, Liv was in control and Becky did the same thing. So both of them with veteran instincts to roll out of the ring when in trouble. Back from another break and the match went to its climax as the match ended up being close to great. Uh, Becky has the armbar, but Liv counters it into one of her own and shoulders were down for the Northern Late Suplex. A huge DDT by uh, Morgan and hits Oblivion. Becky this time rolls out of the ring and Liv. A manhandle slam by Lynch and Lynch wins at 15 minutes. It ended up being a really good match. I rated it at three stars. Uh, this is my brutality. Hit and Mommy comes towards the ring as she has words with Morgan. Ripley says you fight for these people. You fight for your family and to prove she's still the best. Rhea says she knows deep down that she's better than her. And Rhea says she better be 100% at WrestleMania because all these fights that Becky Lynch is doing is she's trying to prove that she's as good as Rhea, but she knows she's not. 
And she says that if you're not 100%, you will be a disappointment. Becky says that she's better, that when people doubt her, she's even better. And if and if it's her versus the whole world, well, the whole world's got another thing coming. And she does her... Becky just loves doing the mic drops as of late. Same with Seth. It's like they're in bed and they're like, sorry, that's a bad image. I don't know if anybody wants to picture that. But it's just like they're talking to each other in their home and they're like... How can we make our promos more impactful besides sucking up to the crowd? Because uh, they both do the cheap pop thing. Becky more than Seth, but and then they, I know, mic drop. It, it makes the cool sound when you drop the mic. I'm not gonna do it, but you know, it makes the, that said pop sound, and it makes it's like an exclamation mark to your point. Um, so I just think they overdo that a little bit, but. Anyway, that was a simplistic promo between Becky and Rhea. We've seen better between the two ladies. And I'm sure we'll see even better as we get closer to WrestleMania. But that was just formulaic and uh, pretty decent at best. Speaking of Mania, both GMs agree that the Judgment Day's tag titles will be in a six-pack ladder challenge with 12 people gunning for the titles, six teams. The Judgment Day was upset, naturally, and they went to go see GM Adam Pierce about this announcement. Ivy Nile takes on Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree take on Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Candice LeRae talked her way into this win. Hartwell laid the boot to Maxine Dupree for the big win, and the, the match revolved around LeRae talking, shaking shots to Maxine Dupree verbally in the corner of the ring. After Maxine tried the reverse caterpillar, LeRae called it embarrassing and said, why would you try and beat us with that? If she thinks the internet saying bad things about her is something, she should see what the ladies in the locker room say. And then she gets hit with the big boot by Hartwell. So Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile, who's on the outside, lose the match to Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. I gave that match three quarters of a star. Wasn't much to see. Like I say, it was more verbal than physical. Michael Cole then introduced the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, for a really good promo here. Cody did a nice job in this segment. Cody says, damn, it feels good to slap your boss if The Rock's his boss. Cole says, how the hell can you trust Rollins? Cody says, people change. Cole, you used to be in that plexiglass with your goggles and your suit. He didn't say it like that, but he didn't say goggles, but that's sort of what he uh, was referring to. And he says... Yeah, he mentions the sledgehammer to the throne, and now Triple H is this close to him. Cody breaks down crying, talking about the fans and his mother and his wife and how his mom's all he has left to his family to give the title to, and he wishes he could give it to his dad, Dusty. And that's what makes him break down and cry. And then he talks about how his wife is one of the uh, most wonderful people in the world for taking a chance on him when he was just a goof in a mask. Pretty much something. Pretty much what he said. He didn't say a goof, I don't think, but he said uh, something along those lines. And then he says, "This see, this story is more about than just me winning the title. This story is about all the people that have believed in Cody, all the people that want to end the bloodline, saying that Reigns and him are at the bottom of the ninth. Uh, they're not in the third inning anymore. Finally, gets a chance to have Roman blood and free, and that's why he's uh, risking it all." To, to, on that first night was that's what he answered Michael Cole when he asked why are you risking so much and Cody will say Cody ended the promo saying Michael Cole you'll get to say at Wrestlemania 40 that Cody Rhodes finished the story Ricochet, JD McDonough and others cut promos in the gauntlet match to take place later in the night Ricochet's promos work a lot better when they're pre-taped I'll just say that Lynch and Morgan go to shake hands, and then Nia Jax runs over both ladies backstage. Becky Lynch gets put through a table, and then later in the night, Becky Lynch challenges Nia Jax for next week, and they'll meet in a last lady standing match. Uh, Nia Jax mocked both ladies after this attack. Then we have the Kabuki Warriors versus Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. This is the third match of the night, and we're almost halfway through the show, and all three have been ladies matches. Interesting. Something about Baszler talking doesn't come off very genuine. Uh, it comes off really forced, but it's the tone in her voice. She says the right things, and she looks okay, but she just the tone of her voice doesn't sound very badass. It doesn't match how she is in the ring. Um, but 
Zoe Stark, you know, she does a decent job too. She tries to be the tough badass chick and they're doing their best. I'm not going to rip on them. They they they're doing their best and it's not it's not really bad. It's just a little awkward. That's the that's what I'll say about that. Uh but both girls are great in the ring and they're badasses, so I like their team. Um just promo wise again, it's a little it's a little awkward, but uh they they're doing they're doing what they can. The submission magician is what Cole calls Baszler. The Kabuki Warriors take it to both gals. This is a good match here. Stark with a springboard senton from the top rope to the floor and the damage control, but then can they win the titles? We go to a commercial break with Cole pondering that. Who would be the champions? Stark with a superplex attempt from the top rope, but Zoe missed it, and Kyrie comes off with the double stomp, but they moved out of the way just in time. Kyrie put it away, with, uh, but Stark made the save. Zoe was compared uh, was countered by Asuka, who hit a huge slime. Stark with a thrust kick and then a 360 boot to the head. Baszler went to win, uh, but Asuka interfered. Baszler with the Karafuda clutch. Sane trying to interrupt by grabbing Baszler. Sane connects, and Asuka with a thrust kick. Sane goes up for the insane elbow and hits it. The Kabuki Warriors end up retaining the titles with help from Dakota Kai on the outside before the insane elbow by Kairi Sane. Gave the match two and a half stars. Rhea says that Andrade is an interesting person backstage and he is going to help the group in some way. Our truth and Damian Priest is a match set up for tonight and they get going next. Our truth comes out to his What's Up theme that he hasn't sang in a while, but he is singing it tonight a little bit. And Michael Cole, Cole says that our truth's childhood hero was John Cena. And I'm just left to say, What? Our truth was in the WWE before John Cena even was. So how did that even make sense? <laughs> I mean, you know, he was K Quick in the WWF before John Cena even debuted. So how how was our is John Cena our truth childhood hero? That makes no sense at all. <laughs> DIY and the Judgment Day go at it. Our truth then comes off the top rope, taking everyone out with a cent on the crowd chant. Holy shit! He runs to the clothesline for Mr. Money in the Bank, but he hits self from heaven with a choke slam into the finish. I read it at a star and a half as Damian Priest gets the win. After the match, the Judgment Day uh, drop DIY with the choke slam on the Priest to Champa on the apron. Main event: Jey Uso comes to the ring next. We're told. Uh, hopefully he offers a challenge to Jimmy, and that's exactly what he does. Jey Uso says, I come to Raw with a fresh start, but the bloodline won't let me be. So how about it's me versus Jimmy at WrestleMania? And the crowds chant, Ye. He says he accepts the ch- uh, he, he says, accept the challenge. Jay wants to knock the yeet out of you. Gunther is given a video package and a promo with Jackie Redmond. Uh, now main event we have a gauntlet match that takes up the third hour so one third of the show with this gauntlet match Ricochet versus Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough versus Bronson Reed versus Shinsuke Nakamura the winner faces Gunther for the Intercontinental title at Wrestlemania Ricochet is in first JD McDonough is in second Ricochet springboard off the top and a code breaker in midair by JD McDonough nice counter as he shoved Ricochet through the ropes to the floor a tilt to wear a back breaker JD grounds Ricochet. Ricochet with some awesome moves into a power bomb. As we're ten minutes in, and Ricochet then is driven the ribs first into the ring post. McDonough has been in control as both men are on the top rope. Ricochet comes off with a shooting star press at the eleven minutes. JD is out, and out next is Bronson Reed as Ricochet gets the victory. Ricochet is rolling with a big crossbody to Bronson. Reed with a running power slam, but kick out by Ricochet. Bronson Reed with a senton and a tsunami as Ricochet is eliminated at the 14 minute mark. Sami Zayn's music hits. He's out next against Reed. Loud Sami chants as Sami Zayn ended up wrestling a half an hour in this one. Loud Sami chants. Uh, all uh, Bronson Reed down as we go to break. Back from the break, Zayn with a rolling sunset flip in the corner. To read at 20 minute mark by Sami Zayn to get the win. Shinsuke Nakamura came out. Another tsunami by Bronson Reed before Shinsuke could take on Sami to make Sami more of an underdog now that he's been attacked by Bronson Reed. We've seen this story before in Royal Rumbles, gauntlet matches in the past where the would be winner is going to get more adversity by getting injured halfway through. Uh, Kinshasa and Zayn rolls up Nakamura with a near fall. 
Step up in Zaguri, knocks Sammy into the ropes and a blue thunder bomb, but Nakamura kicks out. Cole reminds us of their NXT classics together. I get the feeling watching this, Sami Zayn is going to win, as I wrote in my notes, and Nakamura is going to be booked like a loser yet again. Hell of a cook, right as I say that to Nakamura, and he's out. At the 27 minute mark, Gable is the last entrant. Gable and Zayn are the two favorites to win, and they're the last two in their match. Gable wants Zayn up. As he wrestles him, and he points to the WrestleMania s- sign. Chad Gable with a series of suplexes to Zayn. Zayn drives Gable into the steps as we go to our last break of the night. Gain and Zayn both z- see themselves as the underdog. Whoever wins will certainly be the underdog versus Gunther at Mania. Both men set off with stiff blows, throwing down rights. Zayn's third match of the night, and Zayn is in the ankle lock. S- uh, Sammy went for the Helluva kick, but Gable is has him in the ankle lock in mid ring. Zayn gets out and he rolls out in the ankle lock only to get put in it back in the middle of the ring. Zayn then gets out of it and hits a Helluva kick despite limping. Zayn then uh, selling the ankle. Zayn pins him and gets a, a, a three count as Gable was rolled up uh, with a near fall, uh, and roll, uh, Zayn rolled him up too and got a two count and then. After the ankle lock, the last ankle lock at the 40 minute mark, Sami Zayn gets the inside cradle and the victory as he interrupt as he uh, countered a full Nelson slam and another ankle lock attempt. At the 41 minute mark, Sami Zayn defeated Chad Gable. Uh, Gunther then walks out in his suit with a smile as Zayn gives Gable a hug in the ring. I rate this match, this, uh, the gauntlet match, three stars and three quarters. I'll put it in my top 1,000 matches ever. I have a. <laughs> It's kind of a geeky thing, but I have a list of a thousand matches, three and a half stars and above, and this match is three stars and three quarters, so I'll put it on my list. Uh, well, maybe one day I can do a countdown on this on my channel if people are interested. Tell me in the comments section if so. That does it for the match portion of the show. To close the show, as I said, Gunther is smiling in his suit. I rate this show a 5.5 out of 10. It was a little underwhelming in the first half. No men's matches. And Becky Rhea with Seth Drew was a little bit formulaic. Pretty basic stuff for WrestleMania. Um, Just how I feel. I like that the gauntlet match got the main event slot, made it feel important. It was pretty great. So I rate this Raw above average, just barely. Nothing else really was all that captivating on the night, but since the gauntlet took up a third of the night, I felt they'd give the show a somewhat decent rating, a 5.5 out of 10. But usually Raw has been pretty boring as of late. So even though SmackDown's been pretty good, SmackDown's have been pretty fire with Tiffany Stratton's push, uh, Bailey and Damage Control storyline, Everything with uh, Logan Paul, everything with The Rock, everything with uh, Kevin Owens and uh, Orton and all them too. So yeah, this was a little underwhelming, but The Raw uh, was above average just because of the gauntlet match. So next up, we got SmackDown from Memphis, Tennessee, March the 15th, 2024. Then March 18th, Raw from Raleigh, North Carolina next week. The Rock will once again be on SmackDown this Friday night, so all eyes will shift there. I, meanwhile, throughout the week, will continue with the Monday Night Wars. So if you guys like those videos and want to follow along, you can do so. I have them archived that for that very reason. If you want to ever follow along with the Monday Night Wars, you can do that in my channel in the playlist. I I categorize them that way for that reason. So that's thanks for stopping in tonight. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Brett Mix for this Raw review uh, where Cody gave an emotional promo and the six-man gauntlet match headlined. And I'm out. We'll see you on SmackDown, everybody. Thanks for watching.